Hello and welcome to Gardening Australia. Today we'll be looking at the different ways that gardens provide sanctuary. But first, we join Josh, who's honoured to be sharing the garden of one of Australia's horticultural legends. Knock, knock. Marion, are you there? Hi, Josh. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Lovely to see you. You're coming to see my, my beautiful cascading gorilla. Oh, there's a show, an old favourite. Look, it's, it's gorgeous. Marion Blackwell has had an extraordinary career as an environmental scientist, a landscape architect and a conservationist. Yeah, look, I'm so keen to ask you about some of the plants because there's some rippers out the front. Any chance I can drag you out there for a, okay. a few questions? Okay, come on. Terrific. Well, Marion's garden is eight years old. It's not far from the beach and actually sits on the secondary dune system, which means her plants are growing in sand. The tour that followed was a horticultural masterclass. This one's stunning. Now, it looks like a Grevillea wakamia, but I've never seen a yellow flowering it, one before. What's the story? Well, well, when I first collected it, Josh, I only brought back one seed uh, of it, but I collected it and I took it into the herbarium, and I was told it was wikamai. And I said, but it doesn't really look like it where it's, when it's growing. I don't think it is. And it only, it sulks. It sat for about three years here after I put the seed in. But suddenly shot up last year and had these glorious golden flowers. So, so it's a different they, species? They call it miniata. Okay, and have the herbarium finally agreed with you? I have been back to see them. <laughs> <laughs> it's Melaleuca cuna... Cuticularis. Cuticularis. It's known as the saltwater melaleuca. That's right, and you mentioned and it grows in hypersaline water. The, it can, it doesn't have to, but it can grow, I'm told, in water up to four times the salinity of seawater. Goodness. And that's something. The garden surrounds the house and is made up of 18 distinct spaces, as Marion calls them. That's Macrocarpa, Macrocarpa. With plants and flowers tumbling over walls and terraces, it might look casual, but it's all by design. Always in my landscape designs, I start off with local species and then species from the area round about, then West Australian species, then Australian species, and then the world in that order, looking for the actual very one plant for, for the, that particular position. That's how I think about it all the way through. So a poinciana up the back. This top garden here is Mediterranean and that was a housewarming present. Was so it? That's, and I think it's one of the most beautiful trees in the world so I don't resent it being there. It's rather large for what what we have room for. And that's, this cycad, that's a ripper. That's from the top of the Leopold Ranges. Right. Furfuracy. And it's, you just look and make you weep. It's a female, puts up these beautiful carpo fours, all the little ovules. You can go and look and no daddy around. Ah, uh, it's so a lonely they, laugh. So then they're all shriveling up and dying. This place is so full of stories. Marion also works with remote Indigenous communities. It's a two way process that began a long time ago. We had an Aboriginal stockman on our station when I was a child, and he taught me a lot. They're so observant. And they know that because of their background knowledge, they're very aware. I think it opened my eyes to a lot of things, to, to actually being observant, to, to understanding much more about how things grow, why they grow, where they grow, and that type of thing. So what's this beautiful little kangaroo paw? Ah, that's very special, Josh. That's the smallest of all the Anagazanthus, and it's called Gabrielli. And it's a most glorious little plant that lives in swampy areas. It's very interesting. If you think about where it comes from and what conditions it lives under, you can nearly always grow a plant. I just have a drip on it, and I keep it moist, more moist than I would keep most other plants and that plant is now 64 years old. Last year Marion Blackwell was awarded an Order of Australia. The establishment has recognised her work but it wasn't always so. When she came to the West in the late 50s she first had to learn to love the native plants and then break down the local prejudice against them. 
I think in the 60s, people thought they'd stick natives in and the gardener would look after itself and they stuck in anything irrespective. They didn't get advice on design. And although you mightn't think it, this garden's had a lot of design thought put into oh, it. Oh, I can tell. Because I think that's the most important way to display things. Marion's garden is clearly as much about experimentation as it is creating a beautiful environment. Her work continues to inspire people. And I'm left wondering, how does she fit in all of this work? I don't regard it as work. I just go on living and do what I can fit in. <laughs> and if you want to find out more about Marion, her garden, and her contribution to Australian horticulture, grab a copy of the November issue of the Gardening Australia magazine.